Welcome back to Play Testy. It is episode 56, and if you're listening on drop day, it is March 25th. God, we have like two. This is the second to last, I think, episode before opening day, but episode 56, the Joe Kelly episode, it's a special one. I can appreciate that Sammy and I, with Rob behind us, we are, we are on the ground in Fort Myers right now, and we have like a bright and early flight. Like Our plane literally takes off at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. You better be watching on YouTube. You're getting a present Hi, if you're watching on YouTube. Oh gosh, there he is, the yeah, father yeah. himself. Yeah. That's even more well, exciting I'm... than the cameo we got in our interview. Dude, this, <laughs> this is yeah. Oh, uh, we have we have Chris Christopher Troy coming up towards the back end of the episode to break down the at bat with Ronald Acuna, and there's a special surprise, particularly for the YouTube viewers, in that interview. So stick around for that. This is the official podcast of Sammy getting sunburned in Fort Myers. It is the real thing. Yep. He's wearing a red shirt, and his skin might be redder than his shirt. I, I, I do not feel great right now. My skin is burning, and uh, I don't understand why, because I applied sunscreen twice today. Gordo can confirm that I did apply two times very thoroughly. He did. It, it's SPF 30, and Sammy, I think, just has like kind of burnable skin. Yeah. I tanned. I applied well and I tanned. The only place I didn't, it's like this. I'm wearing like a collared shirt and there's like a little triangle of area on my chest that I just didn't realize was out. And that kind of half, it's like a burnt that's going to like go away in a day. Sammy, I feel like you might have like two days. Yeah, my heart is aching for you. My entire body is burnt right now. My hands especially, the top of my hands, which I feel like people don't apply enough to, they are like, I don't know if you can see on camera. They're, I'm... I'm in a lot of pain, so please like and subscribe. <laughs> please, I'm doing this in pain. <laughs> yeah, before before we move on any further, thank you, Sammy. Hit that like button, hit that thumbs up button wherever you're listening, and subscribe. That and give that five star rating. If it's on Apple, Spotify, or or the Odyssey app, just hit that subscribe button and give us that five stars. And on YouTube, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the WEI page. We've got our own post. Get that word every time. Um, but yeah, hit, hit, help us out a bunch. Helps you out a ton. We've been kicking out content all weekend. We know you've seen it. Um, I just, I, I think I want to kick the first question to Pat. Pat, on a scale of one to ten, how much FOMO have you had in the last few days? So, I'll give you, I'll give you kind of my rundown. So, you guys were t like t texted. We're like, we're leaving right now. Whatever. You when you got on your whatever. So I'm working, I'm at clinical. I am with patients. I'm about to, I was like, I got to pee. My phone is blowing up and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Open up Twitter and I see you guys in the dugout with Tristan Casas. And I had, I got to tell you, I was really wondering what the barrel of a shotgun tasted like. <laughs> Wait, did you go, did you go pee? I did. And I was okay. like, no. And I was just scrolling through Twitter and I'm like, I am in 25 degree Connecticut <laughs> working well, 40 hours, uh... working 40 hours for free. And some of my, <laughs> and I was like, my friends are in sunny Florida with the players that we talk about every week. This friggin' guy's bettering his career. What a nerd. Who does that? <laughs> Pat, it's funny. It's funny that you like talk about how quick it felt because that's honestly truly what it was like for us. We we touched down on the plane and like Rob, like big thanks to Rob for coming to the airport and picking us up. Uh, he's out there in the in his red Kia. You can't miss him. We get in the car. The airport's like 10, 15 minutes from the ballpark. We get in the car and don't we don't drop our stuff or anything. We we like go straight there. Like Sammy and I are like unloading our clothes in the car to like get our backpacks out we we get there we go into the press box into the press box drop our stuff off and like pretty much instantly we're like Bob's taking us down to the field it's like oh like these passes get us on here and like there's Tyler O'Neill sitting in the dugout like we go have a good conversation with him um just of note with him like whatever pictures you've seen and like video of him hitting homers and like standing in the box, like in his, with his batteries and stand and whatever. 
it does not even come close to doing it just to, to doing the justice to, to doing doing to doing it's just whatever he is way more jacked in person <laughs> than do it justice oh my god get some sleep boys <laughs> i'm to school for journalism and i can't even speak <laughs> that's terrible um yeah no gordo is absolutely right he is like it, he's cartoonily muscular it looks like it's fake and he was saying to us like that he was saying his farmer's tan makes him look more jack no this guy is shockingly muscular I like good luck if he makes contact that thing is going 572 feet but yeah it, it was pretty surreal for us like just being on the field that close to the players getting to watch them take infield take batting practice and uh, what you call it the turtle the big batting cage the turtle yeah, yeah the turtle. that thing that goes over the hitters when they're taking bp that's yeah. a turtle and by the way, Trevor Story was hitting rockets in batting practice, in the games. Like every time we saw Story, he was hitting rockets. And I try my best to get two up in spring training and stuff like that, those kind of numbers. But man, it's so hard not to feel good about that guy, especially after what we've seen from him from the last two years. Has been what we've expected. But man, he looked good. Gordo, I don't know if you feel the same way. I'm 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 really high on Story bounce back season. Yeah, with, with Story, my state of mind for most of the spring has basically just been i mean we've we've seen him here two years and it hasn't been what it was before throughout the entirety of those two years and that's still going to be my mindset but i i definitely am more hopeful just mm -hmm. after seeing him in person like he looks confident hitting the ball hard every time we saw it i'll add tyler o'neill the ball off his bat sounds just hilarious it's he he hits rockets i mean and not just like on, on the subject outside of like watching the guys play like we hear these quotes from Cora about the vibes. It's it's definitely true. Yeah. And it like, and it's not just because like we were there, because like obviously like we bring the vibes up because we're awesome. But like, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, like obviously. <laughs> yeah. like, they saw us show up and like the vibes were from a 10 to like a 15, but like they were already at a 10. Like you can't argue with it. It was people, and like obviously it's spring training, but guys were in, were in, were, in, were definitely in good spirits and we said it last year so like i obviously take it with for whatever it's worth but like it, it was true i'll say like the the thing that stood out to me was the catching competition and we're in boston where we all live pat's in uh, connecticut but in new england i should say and we get so caught up in all the negativity and of course a lot of that negativity is justified with the expectations and what this team has become on paper but when we got there to fort myers and they were doing the catching competition like these guys don't care about like what people are saying about the pros prospect of this team. Those guys are having a great time. They believe in each other. They believe that they can win. And if you were an outside viewer and you just came into Red Sox camp, you would think this team is favored to win the World Series because these guys are so they they're so ready to go. It made me feel bad. I've been negative for the last like four months. I've been sick of hearing myself be negative. It just felt good to see. And I know there's going to be people who roll their eyes at that. Oh, what's that going to do? That's fine. But it was good to see these guys happy, happy faces on all the players, uh, guys making the team. We talked to Sedan Rafaela moments after he made the team. The following day, we spoke to Joely Rodriguez, who's, by the way, the coolest guy ever. We love Joely after speaking to that guy. Uh, it's Good vibes were much needed for for me at least. I won't speak for Gordo. It's just nice to get a a different perspective of this team that we're all so addicted to following, and it's been hurting us lately. But the last few days, for me at least, have been really positive, and I feel like I needed that ahead of the season. I'm I'm ready to go now. Yeah, and on the you brought up the catching competition. It just brings back a quick memory from back is like so we. Watch BP like we we did the the Q and A with Costas in the dugout, which like we loved the response from listeners and and people on social media to that. Like we we were enjoying that in the moment. We're glad everyone else has gotten to enjoy that. After that, we go to the catching competition and we're we're just like standing there. Uh, we we were talking to Christopher Troy actually coincidentally, so we'll have that on social at some point. We're gonna be kicking these videos out for at least the next several days. Like we have a bunch of stuff for you guys to see. But after that, we're just kind of like hanging out, watching it. And like all of a sudden, like I feel something like hit me in the back. It kind of like yeah. half skimmed me, half hit me. And like we, I just see this ball bouncing away. Like if I had 
better posture, <laughs> this ball, and it, it's like a home run ball going over the monster, would have hit me in the freaking head. Yeah, we were below left field. We were below left field, and someone on the Orioles hit the ball. And that could have ended our trip really early. You almost got, like, concussed badly by that. It was, it was like a 400-foot hit, and Gordo was so close to getting blasted by it. And the funny thing is, it happened. Trevor Story's right next to us. He sees it, and he goes, whoa, 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 guys, we, we, like, hey, we got to be careful. He runs in the clubhouse, grabs his glove like he's ready to defend his teammate, not us, but his teammates who were like in the line of fire, which I thought was really cool. Actually, when we were talking about his leadership and his leadership beard, more importantly, it was just cool to be around the team and see how tight those guys are for, for all the bad stuff we hear about the team on paper. When you see them in person, it's nothing like what you've been hearing. God. So I'm trying to think what else from that day. We, we got to see Jackson Holiday play. We watched uh, Tristan Costas introduce himself yeah. to him for the first time, which was cool. He said he's a – Costas introduced himself. Rob tweeted this out. Uh, Costas said, hey, I'm Tristan Costas. I play first base. Come see me. He also says he's a big fan of Jackson Holiday, which I think is cool. You know, guys, fans of each other from different teams. They're – they're baseball players, but they're also baseball fans. And uh, Gordo mentioned it earlier, but the island question is what really popped off. And it's funny because, like we explained, we basically get to the field, we meet Tyler O'Neill, and then Costas is walking over, and we quickly grab him, like, hey, you have two seconds to talk. And Gordo's talking to him. He has a question prepared. And I'm kind of like, I'm a little panicked because I'm up next, and I didn't really know what to ask him. So I looked at the list of questions that Gordo and I had wrote down as, like, possible things we want to talk about. At the very bottom was the island question. And I was like, oh, screw it. I feel like Costas is funny. Like, maybe he'll like it. So uh, Gordo thought of the question, and then I asked it. And uh, thank you to Tristan Costas, because that was gold. He said, if you missed the island question, we asked Tristan Costas, which one of your teammates would you want to take on an island if you had to survive? And which one would you, would, which one would you not want to take? And he said he wanted to take Darren Duran <laughs> because he's muscular and athletic so we could get Tristan Casas food. And then eventually at a certain point, Tristan would be able to eat him because he has tasty ligaments, <laughs> which was just it, like, he totally like gifted us that quote. So uh, yeah, thank you, Tristan. And uh, man, uh, I'm glad we asked the Island question, even though it was towards the bottom of the list. Yeah. The and that part, question, you know, you go Pat. part of that video is Sammy laughs. Coop, Coop knows exactly what I'm going to say. It pans back over after he makes the tasty ligaments comment, and you can just see like a half smirk and then him fight it trying not to laugh. <laughs> Costas, you mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right there. Who do you think wouldn't hack it on the island that you wouldn't want to bring with you? That little smirk. You can tell so badly that he wants like break character. He goes, I just got to stay with the bit. And he just yeah. does. And it was it was awesome because, like, obviously that got a lot of traction on social media. But what it also did is it set up to ask that question amongst others to a bunch of different guys throughout. I mean, we were, we were here for four days. And the second day was like, holy crap, there was enough rain for the year. Oh, my God. My, it was so – it was crazy. But, like, there was no game scheduled for there. Uh, some of the guys went, like, to need just, like, super far. Um, Two hours, yeah. Yeah, two hours. Like <laughs> Will Fleming and and Lou Merloni had to broadcast, and they were not they were not thrilled about having to make the trip, which was kind of funny in a way. But most of the guys stuck back. So like even in the rain, like we were we were there. It was like a little window of clear of clear skies where we could see some things happening. Like we were watching the guys like do their things, and we would talk to some. Like we, like we we've got a bunch of videos coming out. Like I want to say who do who one. Who, one that I think people are really going to like is Liam Hendricks. He hasn't really done too with the bottom media. Of course, he's injured. He's not going to be pitching until probably mid-2024. Don't give it away, though. But Don't we, yeah, I'm not going to give anything away. But, man, he is a character and a half. Uh, we talked about a lot of fun stuff. I'll leave it at that. But we're going to be releasing that in the next few days. Might save that one in post opening day. But, man, the Aussie has a an outstanding sense of humor. Uh, all I think really successful trip. Um, great meeting the Nesson guys as well. 
uh, is, man, too many people. I don't want to try to mention anyone. I'll, I'll, everyone will forget somebody and feel bad. But yeah, great time meeting everyone. Everyone was super nice. Uh, the staff at JetBlue Park were great. Well, thanks to Rob for having us. And uh, man, I don't know. Gordo, anything else you want to add to that before we get to enough said? Well, yeah, before, sorry, excuse well, me. Sorry. Before we get to the Christopher Troy interview. Jeez, I'm getting yeah, yeah. ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's some good stuff. I mean, yeah, it was really good getting to see baseball in person again. Like an underrated part of the trip is like, it's a great like segue to opening day, at least from our perspective, just because you've got about what, like seven, eight days, which doesn't seem like much, but it can be a little, it can be a lot when you're like counting down the days for something. And to get to watch baseball in person, to it's mostly regulars playing because it's the end of spring training. Uh, like today, we got to see the Braves regulars. God, man, They're, that that lineup's okay. It's That's fine. that lineup. That lineup. <laughs> Gordon and I were talking about that lineup. One through nine is good, but after through that, it's not that great. So the Braves, yeah, top heavy, <laughs> top heavy, yeah, top heavy. The first nine guys are good, but after. No, I'm not sold. Yeah. No, but yeah, the rotation is only five guys deep too. They're they're not. Yeah, the rotation stinks. They only have five good starters. The bullpen's really good, I guess. So we'll give them that. But it, it, jokes aside, holy shit, man! The Braves are just loaded. Cutter Cutter Crawford pitched today. He kind of struggled, but like you can't even I blame a guy. You got Acuna, Albies, Riley. Who else? Murphy. 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 <laughs> yeah, Murphy. Arcia is like a gold glove at short. He's tough. Jared Kalenic is hitting ninth. I know he hasn't really hit his ceiling, but he's batting ninth. That's insane. So Adam Duvall. Yeah. Adam Duvall didn't play today, but he's on the rock. Adam Duvall's on the bench. He hit 20 home runs last year. He's on the bench. For and now. how many games did he hit those 20 yeah, homers? Too? 20 home runs in like 100 games, and he's on the bench. So their backup catcher is Darno, who's like, Starting catcher caliber. I could just go on and on about the Braves. There, I yeah, good God, good for them. Their fans enjoyed. Gordo and I had some Braves fans behind us who were talking about how Boston and Chicago fans are like the worst people in the world. And then they said, "But Philly is the worst." So we we kept our mouth shut. That ties they my They were they they were like the the I want to see the I don't. Rotten. They called us rotten. They did. <laughs> rotten was the word they used. They said they said you think that, or maybe it was like they used to be okay, or like think they'd be good, but they end up being just as rotten as everybody else. Like that's what, like, that's what it sounded like. And they're like they take pride in that. And Gordo and I look at each other. We're not going to say anything, but we were like, yeah. I mean, kind of. Yeah, yeah, we do take pride in that. We we're we're awful. So yeah, we're the worst. Sorry, Braves fans. We think your team's really good. Anything else before we get to this uh, interview with Christopher Troy? No, just socks. The context yeah, of this one, just because we can jump right into it, is uh, Cutter Crawford got the first two outs, I want to say, of the sixth inning. Cora pulls him as the Braves lineup is about to turn over, and Christopher Troy comes in to face Ronald Acuna Jr., like the freaking reigning MVP, 40 homer, 70 home base guy, like probably the best player in baseball. Unless you want to go to the show, hey, right out, like, like it's Acuna. Yeah. And Acuna was looking a little bit uncomfortable at the plate, and he got him out on a check swing ground ball to first base on in a 2 2 count. Like, it was a really, really good showing, even, even in just one batter for Christopher Troy. Uh, so, we want to we won't kick it out of that. Shout out to Christopher Troy uh, for making the time to jump on with us for a little bit and break down the set bat. It was a lot of fun. So, yeah, let's jump right into it. Here's Christopher Troy with us. All right, we are joined by Red Sox pitcher Christopher Troy. Big, big day for Christopher Troy in the last day at JetBlue Park because you got in the game today in the big league game, and you had a big one because you had to face Ronald Acuna. How – just – God, I got to ask, like, did you know you were coming in for Acuna from the – Sorry, you guys cut out on me a little bit. Did I know I was coming in for Acuna? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was told by Walker, the bullpen coach, big league bullpen coach, that Acuna was on deck. Um, but I was just, I was just getting ready. And to be honest, I didn't really like. In the moment, you don't really think about it because you just got to be focused on what you got to focus on. And I know for me, it was just focusing on my target. So while I was facing Acuna, like it wasn't, it wasn't like I was on the mound thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm facing Acuna. Got it. So 
from the stands at least where we were watching from. Hey, Marcelo. What's up, Marcelo? <laughs> from the stands we were watching, it looked like he was pretty uncomfortable in the box. You had him with some pretty ugly swings. The final result was a weak little ground ball. Can you take us to the at bat from your point of view? Yeah, first pitch, heater. I know. I mean, I know, I know my stuff plays like every model, every computer analytically. Like my stuff is big league stuff. So I was never, I guess, concerned with how my stuff would play against them. But first pitch heater, I was just trying to get in the zone, get ahead. Um, and he swung and missed at it, whiffed at it, which uh, I have a high whiff rate. It's not uncommon for me to get whiffs on my fastball. Um, but when I got the when I got the first pitch, when I got the first strike, I was just like. Okay, time for strike two. And went back to the heater up and in, got a check swing, foul ball. Um, and then wanted to finish him off with another heater. And the third heater, I uh, wanted to go up and away. Um, and I missed a little bit down. And he almost put me off pesky pull. Uh, but it was a foul ball. And then I threw the slider threw the slider to the backstop. And I hear uh, Jet Blue go, whoa. And so, <laughs> and so, did you did you was, laugh on the mound after that? We thought we saw you laughing on the mound after that slider. Uh, yeah. I mean, I put the glove over my face. I put the glove over my face just because I was like, bro, I can't be laughing right now. But uh, <laughs> when, I threw the slider, when I threw the slider to the backstop, I was like, bro, what what am I doing right now? Um, and then I think I threw a cutter that was up and away. I thought it was a good pitch. He obviously took it. He's a good hitter. And then slider down, check swing, ground ball, got him. It's crazy, man, because, like, you get on the mound and it, it's so obvious, like, just watching the at-bat that your stuff plays against him, you sound so confident. When you got to the mound, I saw you, like, you pound the glove and then after the final out, it looked a little bit like you were kind of taking it in. Was that true? Were you taking it in a little bit after that out? Oh, yeah. As I was walking in, I mean, it was a sold-out crowd in JetBlue. It was the first time backing up a big league game, so um, I had to. Christopher Acuna, I would imagine, is probably pretty high on your bucket list of guys you wanted to face in a game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess you could say that. I guess I don't really have a bucket list of guys I want to face. Is there one guy you do want to face? Like one guy you're like, I think this would be a really fun challenge. No, I mean, not really. No, <laughs> none, none at all. No guy you want to be like, I need that scalp. <sighs> It's tough to say, and I know I'm not giving you guys kind of what you're looking for, but, I mean, honestly, it's uh, – I got Roman back here saying me. I got Marcel saying me. But, I mean, I, I don't know, bro. Like, I'm not – when I'm on the mound, it's just me versus me. Like, I know that – I know what pitch I have to execute, and as long as I execute those pitches in over a long time, uh, I can – like, I, I know I will have success because the game – the game is designed for the pitcher to win. So, um I feel like as long as I do my job over a large data set, like I'm going to win more times than not. Have you ever faced those guys behind you in live BP? I honestly don't know. Hey, have I ever faced you guys? Yes. What did I do against you, Roman? Marcelo said no. Roman said yes. What was the outcome, Roman? A walk. A walk. That's pretty on brand. <laughs> How did the rematch go? How did the rematch go? Yeah. Um, I probably can. He's laughing. <laughs> would he like to, re would Roman like to respond? Hey, you want to respond or what? <laughs> you want to respond, Roman? No, see, he's a great pitcher. I think he's, uh, he would get, he would get the best of me for sure. I'm supposed to, though. I'm supposed to. The game's designed for me to win. Okay. That's very humble of you. Very humble. And then Marcelo, I think he, I think he left, but. Yeah, would, yeah I, I tell him all the time. He's got too much loft in his swing to catch up to the heater. <laughs> you're, you're like a coach, too. Up by him three, three up, three down. That's all I was trying to do to Acuna. <laughs> yeah, if you're I throwing mean, Acuna like that, you might as well throw Marcelo like that. I mean, Acuna is National League MVP. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't <laughs> know. Marcelo said, like, what's Salem player of the week? <laughs> Marcelo. <laughs> Oh. Um, so were you kind of like taking it in when you left the mound? Like it looked like you kind of like, oh, I, I don't blame you if you did. It looked like you enjoyed that one. How could you not? For sure. And I had a long walk too because I was walking from first base. So um, just kind of looking at the crowd, 
it was cool to be in the dug in the bullpen with uh, Kenley Jansen, Chris Martin, you know, guys like that. It's just, it's it's a uh, it was a cool experience. Hey man, we appreciate you jumping on with us. I don't know where you're gonna be to start this year, but we're gonna come wherever the hell you are. We're gonna come find you. All right. Gordo, Sammy, great to meet you guys. And I missed the uh, the third man joining us. Who are you, sir? Pat. This is Pat. Pat Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I appreciate awesome. you guys' time. Thanks for uh, yeah, thanks nice to meet you. Yeah, no, we appreciate you jumping on, man. Yeah. Sweet. Take it easy, guys. All right. Big thanks. Big shout out, Christopher Troy, for not only getting Ronald Acuna to look foolish at the plate, but for also jumping on play Tessie. And also, obviously, to Marcelo Meyer and for making some quick cameos in there. Uh, that was cool. But obviously, Christopher Troy, the highlight of the day. Of the, hour. The, the man of the hour and the highlight of the day with that Acuna at bat. That was what everyone was talking about after the final spring training game at JetBlue Park. So, obviously, awesome to get him on and uh, talk that through. If you don't follow him on Twitter, I believe his ad is Christoph Troy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And, and to be clear, why this is a big deal. Christopher Troy pitched in, what, double A? He reached yeah. Double A. So, he reached double A last year, and he retired – the reigning NL MVP. And not only that, as Gordo said earlier, Acuna didn't look very comfortable in the box. He had some ugly swings. I mean, Christopher throws, I think in his game earlier this week, it wasn't a televised game, he hit 99. Today he was 97, 98. And he's a big dude too. So that's like, that's a big dude throwing hard at you. And Acuna did not look like he liked it. And it was also funny. I think he was scheduled to leave, but that bad happened. And then like, Five seconds later, Acuna like walked off the field to the locker and yeah. left, which was funny. I I don't think it had anything to do with the at bat, but it was just funny to see. Yeah, and uh, don't I? Yeah, I get it. Baseball, like yes, it's it's designed in the pitcher's favor. Like each at bat, whatever. Don't no, I'm not gonna say that. That, that was that was ridiculously impressive that he made Ronald Acuna Jr. look like that. But we're gonna we're gonna go into some Nuff said before we get out of here. Uh, Pat, I want to give you the first shot at Nuff said. You got anything for us? Yeah, I do. So, as we've established, the boys are down in the fort holding down spring training. I was in enemy territory last night. I was in Manhattan. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, the opener for the concert I saw saying New York, New York, and I wanted to gouge my eyes out. That being said, I took a, I took a bit of a gamble, admittedly. I wore this hat, this Sox hat. Boston into, Red. Into Manhattan, not aside from one one lady at the concert, which was like by accident, not one comment, not one comment. I want to hear about your passion. I want to hear if if someone came into Boston wearing a Yankee hat, you'd be hearing stuff. You you'd be hearing a little a little you know nudges, little little barbs. Nothing, none of it. Pat, in the in the words of one of my favorite people in the world, Gordon Ramsay. That's a great shame. Yeah. I mean, I was, I went in, I was expecting, you know, stand my ground, claim enemy territory. Nothing happened. Not, not one comment, not one look, no interactions. It's a damn shame. You say, These Pitiful. colors don't run. Yeah. I bleed red, brother. <laughs> Barbasol. Oh, yeah. That's what enough said. Yankee fans are soft. You remember those ads on MLB Network? Yeah, that's why I said it. Close shave America. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said it. Close shave Barbasol. <laughs> Close shave Barbasol. You were basically a Barbasol ad yesterday, Pat. Just so yeah. tough American. All right. Uh, yeah, good good stuff. Um, I'd also like to add that Pat attempted to drink all the beer in New York City so that there would be none left for Yankees fans. I think he pretty much succeeded based on the next we got from him and the videos. So. Congrats to Pat, a uh, successful venture into Manhattan, drank all the I, beers. You left out a part about the party that was happening behind you, though. The party that was happening by oh, God, what did I? The nuns. Oh, oh, that was before. Yeah, that was crazy. We go to like this little hole-in-the-wall bar. This is in Jersey. I was not in New York yet. And um, you just hear like happy birthday being sung. And we're, um, they, I was like, oh, they must have like a little like function room out back. And I turn and there is no bullshit. 30 nuns 
just taking a group picture. It was it's one of the one of the sisters' 80th birthdays, and it was so I I I was not in the state of mind to be around nuns. Like it was not. It was unsettling. It was unsettling. Thirty nuns, man. That's a party. Thirty nuns. <laughs> That's a party. <laughs> Uh, you shouldn't have left it, dude. You should have just been one with the nuns. I know. Shout out the nuns because when they left, they started cleaning the room. What? That's 15 so to 20 wine bottles coming out of that room. Hey. Oh, uh, baby. Uh, wait. Are, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not a religious man. Aren't they not allowed to drink? Oh, here we go. <laughs> There are so many reasons for you to check out our YouTube channel, to check out the YouTube episode and all of our YouTube episodes with this one. <laughs> oh, look at that thing! <laughs> you can see uh, very much in middle of Bender Pat, and uh, you can see Gordo's beautiful face and my lobster skin in this episode. Oh. episode. I can't even talk. I'm so tired, man. Oh, my God. Not to mention... Marcello and Roman parading around. <laughs> oh my god, that's good. But no, but I'll I'll go to my note. Said this is a good one. It was the second day. It was the rainy day, and we're just like chilling outside the clubhouse. Like I don't know, we were, I don't know, we were just hanging out. And Casas walks out, and this is like the day after we did uh, the Q and A with him. And he walks by, and he's like, he gives us both fist, fist bumps, and he's like, Gordo, and he looks. He goes, Steve? And what, what you, you're like, Sammy, we'll get it. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, close. We'll work on it. And he goes, damn it. And walks away. Yeah, he's like, he's like, damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, yeah, so I have, a, I have a new nickname. He's no longer the Hebrew Hammer. He's Hebrew Steve. Yeah. And, and, until Casas makes amends and calls me by my name, I'm, I'm now Hebrew Steve. So, yeah, yeah. So Hebrew Hebrew Steve is in the house. Uh, we will. That is going to stick. You are Hebrew Steve. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Cossacks. And, well, yeah, I guess it's okay. He give us the, the quote. Um. All right. I'm up. Uh, my nuff said is I think I'm a Florida man now. I really like it down here. It's kind of like a like a dirty little secret that I like Florida. It's obviously the weather is great, but uh. Everyone's really nice, and well, okay. One weird thing that happened. Uh, we we won't talk about politics or anything on the show, but Gordon and I get to JetBlue Park, and within an hour, Ron DeSantis shows up, and I just thought it was really funny. I'm like, what the hell? We're in a gigantic state, and their mega controversial governor, or whatever he is, shows up. Just really weird. But other than that. I like Florida. Uh, lots of baseball. The food is great. Uh, yeah, I, so I'm, I'm a part-time Florida man now. I want to come back next year and uh, bring uh, what's the uh, the sunscreen that's like it just makes your skin white, like talc or whatever. I'm gonna bring just that. Get, on. Just, get, just get SPF like anything above fifty. But and doesn't it, it stop? On. Doesn't it stop mattering after a while? Are you talking about zinc? Zinc, zinc. Yeah, I'm gonna get zinc and yeah. put it all over my body. I'm gonna look like a ghost. What is what is what is zinc? It's like this. The element technically oh. sunscreen yeah it's yeah. creamy yeah, you're I will damn anywhere. right sammy we are going back next year and i'm i'm fucking coming all right yeah okay yeah pat how are you gonna have we might have to like send pat out here for double the time just to as like sort of it's not a punishment make actually amends. more like a reward but like making amends like you have to just like fend for yourself out here yeah for a few days just and then put we'll me on you. the uh put me on the equipment bus i'll just head down for the whole time i'll oh, drive it oh. i'll drive it You'll you'll be the truck day dude for next year. By the way, like this entire weekend was truck days. They were loading up trucks start to finish, like four days. Like how many trucks were there? They were loading shit onto those trucks from start to finish. It was like yeah. nonstop. It was it, crazy. Yeah, if you're a fan of trucks and loading stuff onto trucks, you're gonna want to get yourself to Fort Myers because there's a lot of trucks to be loaded. Especially if you like loading baseball gear onto trucks. So I know there's a lot of people who always comment on our stuff. Hey, you want to load stuff in trucks, especially baseball gear. This is your chance. Come down to Fort Myers next year. It's too late this year as the Red Sox are on their way 
to Texas to play the defending world champion Texas Rangers in the final two spring training games of the year, although they are not grapefruit league games. I believe the Red Sox, what were they, 17, 12, and then some ties. So, yeah, no, decent spring training showing. Not that it means anything at all, but uh, yeah, I I mean, you could chalk them up to World Series favorites, uh, in my opinion. I think that's fair to say, yeah. Yeah, and uh, before before we wrap this up, like, we're going to be doing some season preview stuff um, in our next episode. What is, God, you lose track of the days here. Seven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, episode 57 is next week. That'll be the Joel episode. Like, sorry. 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 Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, I got a question. I got a question Pat, what's your you voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we going to see you guys on the Netflix show? Uh, it was actually kind of funny. At one point, we were, Sammy and I were like walking in. It was like, I think like day three. And like one of the Netflix camera people was like very much like recording us the entire way walking in. Do I think that's going to make the documentary? Absolutely fucking not. But That'd be it did happen. Uh, you'll probably see like our butt cheeks in the background, and that's it. Nothing crazy. Yeah. They, they certainly oh didn't God. ask us for an interview. I can't. I can't believe they didn't ask us for an interview. <laughs> Can you imagine if Netflix caught Gordo getting smoked by a line drive? Oh my God! Like chapter six, podcaster gets murdered in cold blood by opposing team's home run. Trevor Story could not save him. That'd be pretty cool. We lose Gordon. Now we interview his friend Steve. <laughs> That's Hebrew Steve to you, Pat. Yeah. Hey, my name's actually Sammy, but yeah, uh, looks like I'm doing all the interviews now. I'll miss Gordon. <laughs> I'm here with the podcaster Gordon. Nate Gordon, dead. <laughs> yeah, no, Gordon. or or as it appears on Coop's phone, Nate Gordon. That's me, Mr. Copper Leopard. That's you. Uh, but yeah, Sammy, is that what you just said? Yeah, that's his name. Until he changed my name in his phone. Once you are in the phone, you stay that way in the phone. I don't know what to tell you. And we've had this conversation before. The fans don't want to hear it. You're gonna stay as Copper Leopard in my phone until you get it right. And if you okay, choose to so not, then you're right. gonna be cop. You're cop. All right, let's go to bed. Yeah, yeah Sammy, Sammy, Sammy you know, waking up like in. I mean, we we have we have a six a.m. flight. Which means we're getting up at like four. Yeah, we got like actually we if we go to sleep now, we can get like five hours of sleep. That's fine. Gordo didn't take Monday off of work. What a psychopath. Yeah, we our flight gets in and I'll be able to like log right into work and like spend the, yeah, it's gonna be terrible, oh, but I'm gonna that, do that, dude. I'm gonna log right into my bed and sleep all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well let's let's get let's get some shut eye now. Uh before we wrap and before you leave, hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening, rate us five stars. Apple, Spotify, Odyssey app, all those places. Mm. Don't forget, hit up the YouTube channel, especially for this one. There's a lot of good stuff on the YouTube channel here. Uh, hit that thumbs up button there. Subscribe to the WEI page and keep an eye on our playlist. But for Sammy, for Pat, for Coop behind the scenes, uh, big shout out, big thank you to Christopher Troy for jumping on with us. Uh, super awesome. And we are definitely going to bring him back again for a full, full episode at some point, hopefully during the season. Uh, we'll catch up with him. We'll see where he starts the year, and we'll definitely uh, catch up with him at some point soon. But this has been Play Tessie, Te- Te- episode 56, signing off for this one from the Fort to the Lou.